We're so excited, Lord, for what you're going to do in the youth lives tonight, in the children's church lives, all of them tonight. We thank you, Lord, what you're doing in our life. Lord, we know that we all have a testimony, and we thank you, Lord, that it's valuable to you, it's valuable to us. And thank you, Lord, that you are working in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I'm going to start with uh, testimony, my testimony. This is what I feel like I'm supposed to share tonight. So I'm going to start with this. I came out of, you know, I was starting to drink and starting to party and starting to do drugs and starting to do all that stuff. But the real testimony is that whenever I got touched by the power of God, I stopped. You know, it was, it was like there was enough. God revealed himself. You know, whenever I came on this parking lot, I felt the presence of God from the moment I, I pulled on this parking lot and I walked in and from the moment that I sat down and I don't remember what Pastor Tom preached on, but I, I felt the presence of God. Like I knew that God was here and God was working on me. So I had like an immediate stop of, you know, smoking. And I had been like smoking, like I think up to like two packs a day, if I remember right. You know, it gets so long. It was like a pack and a half or two packs a day that I was starting to smoke. And, you know, I was starting to drink and I was keeping actually alcohol down in my family's um, woods. You know, so, I mean, I was starting to do that, you know, and I was, weed, I had done that. It was all right. I mean, it was, I didn't feel like anything major, but I was about to start cocaine because my girlfriend really wanted to. And I know I've shared this with some and some of y'all know this, but, you know, that's not the only testimony, you know. Whenever I was, um, I, I was trying to remember if I was 12 or 13, my brother gave me magazines that a boy should not have, you know, that his cousin gave to him. So my cousin gave it to my brother, which then he gave it to me. And, you know, there's been so many things that have been sown into our lives as kids that we have to work out. But God is so merciful and so good to help us work those things out of our lives. And that's a testimony for us. You know, we, we walk it out. We believe God. You know, there was things in my life that I felt like were the most important things, which I had a 67 Mustang that I just absolutely loved. And I was in the process of restoring it, but it, it wasn't, it didn't look bad on the, on the outside, but on the inside, it was rusty. So, you know, I was buying all the panels and getting everything for it. And I felt like this is the most important thing. You know, for me as growing up, you know, I, was, I just love muscle cars. Um, so I had that. And then I had, uh, like right when I started coming, uh, I was about ready to like sell my truck and transition. I was buying like a 2001 Mustang GT. But whenever I got saved, all that stuff just didn't even matter. And I just like pushed it off to the side. And I took like, I don't know, six, eight months where every day I'd come home after school or after work and I would just read the word. That's all I wanted. All I wanted was the word. And God has like worked in my life. And there's like... Like I can see it. Like God had to, had to like, I don't know how to explain it. He just, I was so in love with God. And I still am, but he was working in my life. And, and that was like a pivotal moment for me because I was investing myself and God seen that. And he's been using me and putting me up front. And, and I just, just keep getting blessed on top of blessed everything I do. Yeah. Amen. I'm, I'm thankful. You know, but all this stuff came out of a desire. You know, my, like, whenever I found out I was going to try cocaine, like, I was like, okay, God, if you're real, make yourself real to me. And, you know, I was just thinking about it just a little bit ago. I was like, the moment I pulled on that parking lot, he made himself real to me at that particular moment, you know, but it took people of faith to have a place for me to come for God to make himself real. And, you know, every single one of you all, you know, maybe it doesn't look like we're many here, but every single one of you all are so important because you make this church happen. And you make testimonies happen. You know, we sow with our finances and we give with our finances and we give with our finances and we give of ourselves and we, we're servants of the Lord and, and we make ourselves available and it, we step out of our comfort zone all the time. But you're making people's lives change. Like, you might think that maybe you don't get noticed. Maybe you're in the back doing something. You're important and you're noticed. You know, there's, there's, there's so much testimony that I can think of about my life because, you know, I knew God was real. I, I feel like as a kid, um, whenever I was 13, 14, something like that, 
uh, the Lutheran church that I was going to had this huge youth rally down in Florida. And you're like, well, okay, you know, Lutheran church, they're not really spirit filled, but they invited some really cool like worship teams to come in. And it was like Sonic Flood. I, I, they're not worship, but you know, like, you know, and there's like kids I finally seen for the first time with their hands lifted up. I had never seen that before. That's like, those guys are weird, you know, but some of them were doing it. I'm like, okay, all right, that's something new. And, you know, I just didn't see that. You know, at my church, you were just, you stood up, you sang a hymn, and you sat back down, and you stand up again, and you sing a hymn, and you sit back down. But, you know, God has been in our lives for so long. And if you really look back and you really start to think about it, you can see these glimpses of where God was really pointing you towards Him. Um, and it's just taken a while for us to get the realization and to come to that all come from different backgrounds and different testimonies and things we've walked through. And, you know, I'm so thankful that God got to me before I tried cocaine. Um, and, you know, because that stuff is devastating. I knew it was devastating, but, you know, I was 18 and that's the people, you know, that's what younger kids in this group that I started hanging out with. I was hanging out with the country guys. And then I got around, of course, this girl and, you know, the rest is history. You start following after and doing those things. And um, what do you say? You just, you're just thankful, though, that God grabs you out of them. So before we get started, I want us to, to say this together, if you guys would, with me. Uh, this, is, this is for us. We're going to do a confession together tonight. Whatever I have need of or desire... I know, God, you want to meet the need and the desire. Help me to overcome anything that could hold me back today. So, you all made a confession, and now God's working on that confession. That was a heart's truth desire. God is making it happen. Whenever you speak, whenever you pray, God is a good listener. So whatever hindrances that have been holding whatever back that you need is being removed, whether it is you who need to grow or if it's some junk that has been stopping your blessing from manifesting to be removed. When I made a confession to God, if you would really make yourself real to me, he made himself real to me. Now, it, there was some time in between. I don't know. I, I think about this. I, I'm pretty sure my brother invited me like two weeks before the lady had mentioned, my girlfriend had mentioned that she wanted to do cocaine. And like, at, like when school got over for that year. So there was like one week left whenever I came here before school was going to get out. All right. So like when school got out, we were going to try that that weekend. But God made himself real. And he'll do it for you. He just cry out, whatever it is, whatever you're going through. If you'll make that serious cry, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be tears. It's just, God, this, it, make yourself real to me in this situation. You know, you're not alone. You don't have to fight this alone. And you don't have to be the source for yourself. And so often we look to ourselves of, Okay, what do I have in my checking account? What do I have in the fridge? What do I have here? What do I have there? Instead of saying, God, make yourself real in this situation and let him do something amazing. I know I have a problem with that sometimes because my dad is so, you, you, you have to have a plan and you follow that plan and you do it. And that is not me. <laughs> like, I try. And, but, you know, it's, I do set out a plan and then I'll go, okay, I need to follow this. But I don't always follow the plan. Because you know, like all of us, you know, we, we, we listen to the Holy Ghost sometimes and then we listen to ourselves sometimes. And if we just listen to the Holy Ghost all the time, we wouldn't have to come up with our own dumb plans. <laughs> so if we would be better off. So the obstacles when you have a pure heart with God and you pray are removed. Walk it out, whether it's financial, house-wise. I mean, does anybody's house need a little bit of repairs? I mean, come on. I mean, it's a faith thing, right? 
And we get to trust God, and He's going to show Himself strong to us because that's what He wants to do. Things change when we pray. So in James 5, 16, Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Your prayers are so effective. You have no idea how effective your prayers are. And when you and when you talk to God, things shift. You are making shifts in the direction that you're going when you pray and count, especially for the time we're living in. Like, this is what I felt like the Lord really wanted me to pray. Like, it didn't take me any time to write out the rough draft on this of what I wanted to say because just it was just in me. Like, this is what you're supposed to hear. We're at a time that prayers are so effective because we're, we're so close to the end. Like, I believe that with my whole heart. I don't know if that's 10 years, if that's three years, if that's 20 years, but we're so close that things can happen so quick because God's drawing people. Have you ever heard that, uh, that saying, uh, oh, it's like on TV, it's my money and I want it now, J.G. Wentworth? It still so I got stuck in my head as a kid, so it, was like, it still goes through there every now and again. You know, it's your promises that are in God's word, and you want them now. And if it's a promise from God, it, he's a promise-keeping God, it's going to happen. So if you can find it in the word, it's yours if you'll walk it out. So are we experiencing all the promises? I mean, we're experiencing some. We're strong in some areas. But you know what? We're growing. And God doesn't expect us to be perfect, right? He's not beating us over the head like, get it right, get it right, like sometimes we do our kids. <laughs> because we love them, you know. Come on, think, think, boy, think. Please. That's what my dad would always tell me. We just need to get in there and get serious with the word with God and with ourself. It's time for all of us to get out of our head, stop caring what people say. If you offend somebody, try not to. But you guys have a standard. It's called the Word of God. And if people make fun of you for it, who cares? There are more that are for you than against, than against you. You have a whole army behind you and backing you. When you are standing on the word and when you're going after promises, I mean, people are going to make fun of you. And, you know, at this time and this hour, who cares? I mean, really. You know, people are going to stick their noses, you know, up at you. They're going to say, what are you talking about? It might be family members. You know, but as long as you're putting God's word first, don't you think that just makes God so happy that you're like, he's like, that's my son. That's my daughter. I'm proud of them. You know, we all do need to be nice. So, you know, sometimes um, I use this statement, uh, shut your mouth when you're talking to me, you know, <laughs> you know to, to the enemy. Because it's like, you know, just shut up. I don't even want to hear it. And, you know, sometimes we you know, like to say that to somebody else. <laughs> but, you know, God... <laughs> He's just so for us. We can't afford to not to love people and be courageous at this time. We have to be courageous in our faith. And Joshua 1.9 in the New Living Translation says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This is one of those verses that we speak, and I should have just, we speak this at night over, like whenever we go to bed, we always have a Bible verse. I always make sure to say to my kids, this is one that they quote back to me and I quote to them. I should have. Should have known this one, but so yet being up here sometimes, getting your head in the game. You know, Joshua, God told him this three times in nine verses. Be strong and courageous, for I am with you wherever you go. Right whenever he's about ready to lead the children of Israel into the promised land. 
This has to be who we are. We have to be strong and courageous. We can't let fear hold us back. Because fear is going to try and grip in and grasp and hold on to you. And you are, I'm going to say this, better than that. You are stronger than that. You don't live by fear. You live by faith. You are the mighty army of God that is changing this world. We need God's wisdom. We need to comprehend what he's saying. And we need to get in a place where spending time is easy to come up with or to come and meet with God. It doesn't take long, but it's so, it doesn't take long, but it's so much fun when you get to spend some time with God. Now, God's not asking for everything. I mean, he, he is in one way. He wants you. He wants you to, to give yourself to him because if you will, he's going to make something of you. And he's going to work all the wrinkles out and work all the kinks out. And you're going to be that fine old machine. And we're, we're, we're learning to, to lay ourselves down. It's a process, right? You know, I'm only an 18-year-old in Jesus. It's taken time. But I'm here. But you're here. You're here. You're taking your time. You're growing up. It's a process. What's more important than spending time with God? Really nothing. But there is times we have to go to work, you know, or there is bills we have to write out, those fun things. You know, there's, there's, we got to spend time with people. We, you know, we've got, um, priorities that we have to, to do. But taking and finding some time. I mean, it can be five minutes and those five minutes can be the most powerful and funnest time of your whole day. So we're living in the last days. We're living in a supernatural days. Those who are believing God can see quick manifestations of what God has. There is less time than there has been. And there are more spirit-filled people than there has been before. Think about this. A hundred years ago, there wasn't, not as I understand, there wasn't very many people that spoke in tongues or that were spirit-filled. Maybe there was some. But as of today, think about how many since Kenneth Hagin is really, you know, here in the U.S. at least, has really done his, you know, whenever he came and preached and people like Kenneth Hagin, how they have really expanded on people walking in supernatural, Holy Ghost-filled lives. You know, when we, when we start to, when we pray in tongues, you know, we don't know what we're officially praying. We know we're praying out the perfect will of God, but we could be praying for somebody clear on the other side of the world. Let's go to Matthew. Five, and I'm going to read to verse nine. It says, Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. We have to have this revelation. That when Jesus speaks it, or when you speak it, things, no matter what they are, no matter how far away they are, change. There is no distance in the Spirit. So this soldier had that understanding. Whenever... I was, I don't know, whenever I was, however long ago it was, maybe two years ago, my brother was driving home to Iowa. He came down for a family gathering. And like, I just felt this sudden urge to start praying for my brother. So like, I got, I turned off the radio and like, it was me, Randy, and both the kiddos. And I was like, we need to pray for Jason, my brother and family. But I knew they were traveling back and we just started praying and there was a release, and then we stopped praying in tongues. And I didn't know why, so of course we went home. And later I found out that Jason, like my brother, was in a wreck that totaled their vehicle. Completely totaled their vehicle. They hit a deer, but I mean, not one, not one person was harmed. They, they got off the road fine. Nobody got hurt that was behind them. So, you know, when we pray and when we hear the Holy Spirit or know that the Holy Spirit's tugging on our hearts, we need to be so attentive. Because we're in these times that, like, we cause things to shift. And 
And it's so cool because God wants to use us out of anybody. Why would God want to use me? I have no idea. But it's so awesome that he loves me that much that he's like, hey, I'm thinking of Eric. Hey, I'm thinking of, of Randy. Hey, I'm thinking of all of you guys. All right, I'm going to turn to Psalm 66 in the message. I'm going to read from verse 16 through 20. All believers come here and listen. Let me tell you what God did for me. I called out to him with my mouth. My tongue shaped the sounds of music. If I had been cozy with evil, the Lord would never have listened. But he most surely did listen. He came on the double when he heard my prayer. Blessed be God, he didn't turn a deaf ear. He stayed with me, loyal in his love. Guys, he's listening to you. He's waiting for you to have a conversation. He's waiting for you to pray. This is my style, guys. I have to re-get focused, and this is just who I am. So I'm not, you know, I'm learning this, too. Like, I'm okay with me being me. I don't have to be like somebody else. You don't have to be like somebody else in a perfect mold. And I'm just learning to be okay with that. Like, before, I was always trying to push. Like, okay, I got to have the next this. Got to have that. The heck with that stress, you know? I don't need that stress. I'm just going to be me and let God work through me the way I am because he's okay with me. So we've been growing for many years and God has been preparing us for what's ahead. You know, it's just like as a kid, like God had to prepare all those things that I've walked through. You know, like for me, I was 10 years old and my dad started a second business. And I'm so grateful that my dad did because that set our family in a different Like we were poor, (laughs) you know, we were barely making it by, but my dad believed that he was doing what he was supposed to do. And he started this business. And the cool thing about my dad is he prays. He does pray. Uh, You know, he doesn't go to a spirit filled church, but he prays and he believes God. And it's so cool because, you know, as a kid, um, let's share this. You know, my dad had it on his heart that there was this family. And again, we were poor. We were barely making it by, but there was another family who was worse off than we were. And my dad's like, I just want to help them so bad. So he, I don't remember what he wrote. He wrote them a check that could help pay some of the bills. And he sent it to him. And my dad is awesome. For for me to grow up with a dad like that, you know, that is so cool. And my mom, she's she's amazing. And at like 13 years old, I think I was, whenever whenever we got in a car accident. And after that moment, you know, she really went and started just like laying in bed and she, she hurt. And, you know, she's still overcoming that, but I believe she's going to overcome it. I believe she's, like, I've walked up to her and I've prayed over her. And there was like a week and a half, two weeks where she didn't feel the pain. But, you know, the faith has to be there to keep that. And, you know, she's learning it, I believe. You know, I gave her How to Keep Your Healing by Kenneth Hagin. You know, she's got the resources and God's working on her too. And I've had to walk through some things. You know, I've walked through... Of course, my dad, I wasn't able to spend much time with my dad after that. You know, at 10 years old, that's a really important time for a boy to have with his dad. Growing through things, I probably wouldn't have got, I don't think I would have gotten involved with these magazines, but you you never know. I mean, let's be honest, you're out in the middle of the country and it is what it is. Um, You know, and then at like 10 years old, I still had my mom and she was, she's always been so sweet and always wanting to do great, like big things. And she always take us to the landing, which is a, like a little water park, or she would always try to make things fun for, for the kids or for me. And uh, she'd bring cousins along and it was, it was always a fun time. Um, but you know, after she, you know, really started just not getting out of bed anymore, you know, and it was just me from 13 on. And, you know, I would come home and there was nothing for me. So I had to create my own fun. I had to create, figure out what my own life was. And, you know, I see people, you know, like some people get killed, you know, racing cars or people get killed riding their four-wheelers, the kids, you know, young kids, younger kids. And, you know, that's just, I mean, it was concerning. But, you know, you grow up with these things and your friends sometimes die or this or that. And you're just like, you know, God, are you, are you there? You know, I'm sure I'm not the only one to think that, you know, but it was so cool that whenever I needed him, I could call on him. And there was a time before I got saved that, and I know I've shared this before, 
that I was riding a four wheeler and I like went down this ditch and I like got on the gas and, and it hopped up on ba both back wheels and it just balanced itself, perfectly balanced itself. And I fell back in the ditch and people that I've heard stories of, I mean, the four wheeler comes back over and smashes him. But the thing was perfectly balanced. Like God was trying to get my attention. Like he has something for me. And I believe that. Like there's something I'm supposed to do. He saved me so many times and saved you so many times. And maybe times you don't even realize it. But you have a purpose. You have a calling. Maybe you're trying to figure out what it is right now in your season of life or whatever you've got going on. But you have a purpose. And what you're doing, where you're working is not invaluable. You all are making a difference in the world to God. You are his salt and light. You're who God is looking for. So we cannot settle. We cannot settle. We cannot settle. We have to be encouraging. We have to encourage ourselves. We have to encourage others. You know, David, he had to encourage himself after everybody wanted to kill him. I mean, that's a good time to encourage yourself. <gasps> you know, God, okay, God, you, are you for me? Yes, yes, you're for me. You know, you've called me to do what I'm doing. And sometimes we need those slap in the face. Like, God, what is it that I'm supposed to be doing? Because we get sidetracked. So what God has in store for you and your families is huge. Where the love of God is, there's blessing. There's the blessing of God, the favor of God, the provision of God. If we dig our heels in and we'll fill our heart with the word and we'll wash it down with praying in tongues, I mean, get ready for, the, for this new thing. I believe that this ride is truly about to take off. Yes. Amen. And it's just going to get better and better and better where there's no lack among us where there's no sickness among us, where we're always overcoming and people are looking at you and you've got such a draw on your life. So are you a grab it, blab it, confess it, possess it, world shaker and history maker? I know I am. Are you more comfortable about it though? Like, are you comfortable being that? These are true questions we have to ask ourselves. Like if somebody walks up to you and say, hey, are you one of those tongue talkers? You'd be like, yeah, aren't you? You know? Yeah, exactly. So I love to walk in the blessing. Every time I turn around, it's just like God does something for me that it's just like, God, how did you know? <laughs> yeah. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, when I got into fear. So um, a lot of y'all know our story about Eli and how we walked through, um, you know, him going into the hospital and he was there and he had a, his bowel wasn't, wasn't made right, wasn't formed right in one spot. It's just one spot. So they were able to do an operation. And instead of it taking like two weeks, like they said, or however long and had to do it in multiple operations, they were able to do it in one. And how the doctors were like, that's a miracle. And, you know, he, um, you know, he, after he did that operation, so they, so they did that operation where they connected all back together and then they removed his gallbladder? No. Appendix, sorry, his appendix. And then they circumcised him all at the same time. And the little guy, I mean, he was just, he was in a lot of pain. And they were giving him too much medicine and he was stopping breathing. And three times I laid my hands on him and praying in tongues and was speaking over him. And he would come back to life after the doctors were trying to do everything. And they waited for the guy to come back to, they were going to try and shock him or whatever. And I laid my hands and he'd pop, pop back awake. And, and like the nurses all gathered around like the last, the third time they all gathered, gathered around and I was praying over him. And, and he was, he was coming back and they're like, what's, what are you praying? What are you speaking? And I got nervous at that point. You know, I, I was the one to get into fear. And um, God is so merciful and so good, guys. 
And God had so much mercy because, although I got in a fear because, of course, I told them what it was and I was praying in tongues and stuff and they thought maybe I was speaking uh, a different language. But, you know, he, he'd stopped breathing two other times and I'd lay my hands on it. It wasn't the same because fear had came in. But God still, they didn't have to shock him or anything. They were able to get him awake. But fear can hinder that. And that's where be strong and courageous for I am with you. No matter what you're walking in or what you're going to walk through, be strong and courageous for I am with you. It needs to be in the back of your mind. When you go to work, be strong and courageous for I am with you. It needs to be what you hear. When you're on the phone and you're talking to people and they're not, be strong and courageous for I am with you is what you need to hear. You know, like I said, I love to walk in the blessing. And that was the time when I got into fear. But, you know, our house is an air conditioner and a heater because it went out last year. And I was like, okay, Lord, I just, I, I, we were believing God and we were trusting God. And we seen God come through all finances that we needed for that. And that was so awesome because it was like a 90 degree week. I think it was. It was hot. <laughs> and that house gets hot. <laughs> you know, so... Our faith has grown, but that was, you know, Eli went through that thing. Man, he's eight years old now, and that was two years ago. And we're seeing our faith grow, okay? And your faith is a walk. It's not like a leap and another huge leap and another huge leap. A lot of times it's, it's small steps, or, or maybe sometimes it can feel like you're going two steps forward and a step back, but you, you're, you are making progress. You know, and this, this year we needed a roof on our house. And our roof is huge because <laughs> we were blessed with a, an amazing house, amazing deal that was way beyond me, way beyond what I was thinking. But God is taking your faith, Randy's faith, because that was not what I was thinking. I wanted the cabin in the woods and she wanted the mansion on the hill. <laughs> so, which is good. It was definitely a stretch for me. Uh, you, you know, but we've, but we've been seeing these things come together when we put our faith out there. And you know, the cool thing is, is like, all right, God, what I do is I like to say whenever something like this comes up, all right, God, I know that you've got this. I just thank you, Father, that this is taken care of. What's my part? And then I take time and I listen. I don't go like, okay, where's my checkbook? All right, how much stocks do I have? I don't have very many, but you know, what was this doing? What's that? I'm like, God, what is it that you're saying to me? What is it that I can draw on from your wisdom? Because you've already got this figured out. All I need to do is align. The Holy Ghost has to be your guide. For some of us who haven't grew up listening to the Holy Ghost, like children's church kiddos, because that is my goal, is that they pray in tongues, that they listen, that they hear, I make them sometimes get up and be like, all right, what is God saying? And I just, we, we just, we just have those times. You know, I pull them up and I want them to get used to this and be comfortable when they come in here. They go into youth where it's not just something like, oh, that's weird. You know, I want them to have those encounters and experiences at a young age where it's so normal that they do it instantly and they become at the youngest age, the next trillionaires, millionaires, billionaires, whatever, because God has for them to be prosperous. So we have to learn. When I started to hear God's voice, I was 18. And I, of course, had a pickup truck. And I was like, God, just lead me around town. I'll, I'll go wherever you want me to go. You just, I, I want to know your voice. And I'm sure I went down some streets I maybe shouldn't have or this or that, but I was learning. And we need those times. And if you're, you know, wondering, do I really hear the voice of God? Do the same thing. Go for a walk. Get on your bike. Go drive your car. Go spend some time with God. I mean, spending time with God. And then go put God to let him start leading you. There's, you know, there's so many things that you can do with being led with the Spirit. Maybe, maybe you feel like you could go bake some cookies for the next door neighbors. Maybe there's somebody who you can minister to. You know, um, I knew this one lady who was listening to the Holy Ghost and knew she was supposed to go buy some groceries for this family. 
And she went and bought groceries, being led by the Spirit, and bought everything that was on their grocery bill, this, lady's, this other lady's grocery bill, and brought it to them. And it was exactly what they needed. You have that connection in the spirit realm to make, I mean, God's using you to bless somebody. And in turn, you're going to get blessed for that. And it's so cool to see we can do that. I shouldn't hit that. You know, it, it increases your faith when you start to do something like that. And you're like, that was exactly what I needed. Or maybe you give somebody an encouraging word and you're like, how did you know I needed it right now? I'll call somebody every now and again, or I'll send somebody a text just to encourage them because they're on my heart. I know God's putting them on my heart. Sometimes I've prayed over a knee, you know, and I'm like, whoever's at church that their knee's hurting them. I just thank you, Lord, that their knee's healed. You know, I'll, I'll, I, that's just, that's just me. So everybody in here, God wants to help you have a wonderful life. So when we pray, we make havoc on the enemy's camp. Praying is big for this hour we're in. We need to pray, pray, and pray. If it looks bad, we need to pray. If it looks good, we need to pray. Don't stop talking to your best friend. God is listening. His ears are tuned into your frequency, and he is always listening to it. If you hear the enemy start to tell you that you can't have that, God doesn't want you to have that. That's stupid. You are pulling stuff out of the spirit realm, and the enemy sees how close you are to possessing it. Tell him to tell him it's not stupid and to scurry on because you know you're getting your heart's desires, and he is a loser who won't possess much for long. You are more than a conqueror through him who loves us. That's in Romans 8:37. God is totally in love with you. Just keep your heart right and follow the direction God is leading you. Tell the world to shut its mouth when it's talking to you. Like the news or anything else that tries to put its own word above God's word. Because God's word is your standard. In Romans 8, 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delighted, but delivered him up for all, for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? That's you guys. It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for you. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Absolutely not. None of those things. As is written, For your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm sure people try to run from God. But, it, you know, where can you go? You can't get away from his love. And you can't get away from the church because we're out there in the world, right? And that's why where you're at is so important. Because the world's looking. It's trying to find that, like, success, you know, Make a million dollars in one year. Let's try it. Well, the real success is get your life right. Find Jesus. Find your hope. Find true life. That's real success. Money, it's going to come and it's going to go because we all have ideas on how we could spend a lot of money. So if faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, then fear comes by hearing and hearing by the word of what the world says. And we need to remember that, that the world is living in fear. That's, that's what they hear. That's continuously being blasted at them. And they're so concerned. They're living in fear and waiting for me and you to show them what real men and women of God look like. And you're in your spot. 
I, I just feel like I'm supposed to encourage you. You are in your spot where you're supposed to be. Be like, be ready to be used. Pray before you get to work. Maybe pray with people that will, you know, stand with you. I don't make, make it, we're making a difference. Make that difference. Be courageous. If you continually to listen, if you'll continually listen to the word, then you don't have to get in fear. You can meditate, think about, get focused on a Bible verse to keep you soaring high above the issues of this world. You are God's best. You are making a difference and you will make it. Jesus is the promise keeper. Put your trust in him at all costs. There we go. So buckle your seatbelts and hold on to the word of God. You know, that's what I brought tonight. But be strong and courageous. Don't hold back. Don't let some doctorate whatever tell you you can't. Or you, if they tell you you're stupid, that just goes to prove how stupid they are because God can do all things. So you all are that church, that body of believers that God is using. And you are making such an impact. And you might can't, like, you can't see it with your own eyes. Sometimes we just can't see it. But things are shifting and moving out of place in the spirit realm because you're there. So with that being said, I'm going to pray and we'll end the service. And um, I hope everybody got something out of it. So... Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful for you. We're just so thankful, Lord, that we can be strong and courageous in you. And Lord, that every every desire, every need that we'll ever have, you've already provided a source for us, which is Jesus. That source that we're just so grateful for. Father, that source that has been such a joy to all of us to come to know. Lord, we're just grateful for you. Grateful for Jesus. Grateful for the word. Lord, take our lives and do something awesome with them. Just use them for your glory for the rest of our life. We want you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right.